What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, Crypto Airborne in the house, dropping you guys the latest and greatest cryptocurrency news and updates. Today's June 23rd, 2022, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a crypto market overview, and then we're also going to be talking about Voyager, tons of FUD going on, revolving the company, and then secondly, Alameda is surrendering some of their shares of the Voyager stock. If you guys think that's interesting and want to know a little bit more about that, stick around and I'll tell you all about it. All right, guys, hopefully you're having a great day today. I sure am. The least you guys can do, and I got to do the plug, smash that thumbs up button on your way in. Consider subscribing if you aren't subscribed and turn on those bell notifications so you guys get notified as soon as I upload a video. Doing pretty good today. Market overall is doing pretty green. I got a fresh haircut today, so I'm feeling good. Markets are up. Portfolio is up a little bit. Could this just be a small, you know, recovery or whatnot? Possibly, you know, we're still in that bear trend, but hey, I'll take it after <laughs> the last couple days we've had. So yeah, before we begin, start talking about a little bit about Voyager FUD. I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick market overview. So the market is doing pretty good. Like I just said, we're up about 5.63% the last 24 hours. Let me just do a quick refresh. I know Bitcoin's been hovering around that $21,000 mark. We're up about 3.57%. Like I said, $21,037. Ethereum's doing pretty good, up about 6.09%, sitting at $1,145. BNB is up about 4.55%, and uh, XRP up 3.26, and Cardano up 1.81%, up 1 sitting at $0.48. Cents. Top gainers, we got Muse up about 113%. Jupiter, <laughs> sounds like Mars and Jupiter, that's funny, uh, Jupiter's up about 83.16%, no idea what it is, but it's just over a penny, Dex Tools up 50%, Venture Gold up 50%, but like I said, a lot of green today in the markets. Top losers, we got Math, down about 38.24%, HOPR down about 13.63%, and Green Satoshi Token down about 7.14%, sitting at 18 cents, like I said, not much red Overall, market's doing pretty good today. Today is June 24th. Holidays for today. It's National Take Your Dog to Work Day. Did you guys know that? Did you take your dog to work today? Let me know. St. Jean Baptiste Day. Cream Tea Day. Farmer Day. International St. John's Day. N.T. Ramey. Johnny. Matariki. Probably butchered all three of those. Don't know what they are. Midsummer. National Food Truck Day. I love food trucks. That looks pretty good. Donut food truck. Uh, Pralines Day, oh, I love Pralines too, down in, uh, when I was stationed in Savannah, Georgia, the Pralines at the Savannah Candy Kitchen, I believe it is, are awesome, get a chance, go check that out. National Relationship Equity Day, swim -a Day, Vinci Moss in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Tana Monga, probably butchered that, and Stassi Schroeder, Schrader Day, I think she's a reality TV show person, name sounds familiar, I forget, some MTV show. There you have it for your national holidays for June 24th. Crypto bubbles, top 100. See a green. Love seeing it. Looks like Storage and Matic are up on top in the top 100. Favorites, Matic still crushing it. Like I said yesterday, it's up 21.1%. Everything's doing pretty good. Helium's up 2.1%. Ethereum's up 6.1%. Elrond's up 2.9%. CKB's up 1.9%. Uh, VGX up 1.1%, sitting at just under about 43 cents. Last hour, Elrond's up 1.7%. Matic still crushing it, up 4.2% on the hour. Total crypto market cap, we're hovering just below that $1 trillion mark. According to this, it's saying we're at about $907 billion. However, TradingView always, or CoinGecko always has a little bit higher. Let's check this out. We're up about 5%, sitting at $971 billion. So just shy, about $30 billion, under $1 trillion. Hopefully, we see this relief rally that is much needed here shortly to get back up over that $1 trillion mark. Bitcoin dominance coming down a little bit, uh, but still trading a little bit sideways here. Currently looking at about 44.08%. U.S. dollar currency index looks like uh, on the daily we're green a little bit. We're looking at about a 104.429. Fear and greed index. Same thing the last three days. It's been at an extreme fear. 11. Let me just refresh that to make sure. Yeah, yesterday we were at 11, day before that we were at 11, and today we're still at 11, which kind of is a little surprising because we did have a green day, so I'm not surprised we didn't see a little bit higher number than that. But uh, be fearful when others are greedy, greedy when others are fearful. We've been in this extreme fear for over a month now. You guys can see this big clump going on. Uh, you know, 
some people like to trade on the fear and the greed. Not financial advice. Hate saying it, but uh, might be a good time to buy if you guys are just getting into this crypto space or you got some funds on the side to buy the dip. But uh, <laughs> you buy the dip, the dip that keeps on going. All right, so Bitcoin closed today. Did did green? Did pretty good. Uh, did close above twenty thousand eight hundred. Likely to, to release downside pressure for some time. Upside target and resistance is twenty two thousand, twenty three thousand, and once close above overhead trend line, we're looking at twenty five thousand eight hundred thirty five. Like he says, always manage risk. Pay attention to that nineteen thousand nine hundred level. If it fails to hold, upside momentum stalled. So just keep an eye on that. All right, so jumping into topic of discussion for today is Voyager. We got the Voyager token looking at it real quick. It is up about 1.6% the last 24 hours, currently sitting at about 42 cents, just under 43 cents. 24-hour trading volume has been insane. This is really abnormal, usually when nothing's going on. But, you know, with all the FUD going on, a lot of people are selling, a lot of people are buying the dip. Just depends on how you feel about the project. People are shorting it, so on and so forth. But we're looking at about $10.5 million the last 24 hours. Market caps sitting at about $123 million. The VYV, I can't even talk today, VYGVF stock uh, got crushed today a little bit, down 1.94%, sitting at 56 cents, closed on the day. Do believe we started at 9.30 a.m. at about 65 cents. So just a slow downtrend all the way till about, looks like after hours it went up about 4 cents. So just keep an eye on that. We'll talk about that here in a second. All right, so the Voyager FUD is absolutely insane. You got CoinDesk here; they're like the they're like the fudsters of the market, of the crypto market. I I unfollowed them, man. Like, Invest Voyager reduced the daily withdrawal size to ten thousand from twenty five thousand after it revealed seven hundred twenty million exposure to Three Arrows Capital, reporting by OK Night Crypto. Look at the picture. Could they have not picked a terrible worst picture of steve ehrlich just making him look like oh he's a bum just he's all scrubbed out looks like he's in a in a basement his basement or something like this is insane guys like the fud is real you got people that never talk about voyager coming out of the woodwork just bashing it either they're just jumping on the trend a lot of youtubers like to do that if there's a trend they'll talk about it so on so on and so forth which here i'll show you here in a bit we got Crypto's RS. I like him. He's one of the only big YouTubers I like. But he put out one of the static videos earlier this afternoon. Voyager Digital changes withdrawal limits. And then they use the same, he used the same picture, just like a D-Gen photo of Steve uh, in his thumbnail. It's just, man, come on, man. I didn't, I didn't watch the video. I watched a little bit of it, but I didn't watch the whole thing to, to see what he actually said. I think I did skim through the comments just saying how we did get the line of credit from Alameda and we should be good with all the comments and quit spreading FUD, George, blah, 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 blah. He put that out, and he got Plan C coming out after just been bashing Voyager lately because I know he was a big Celsius fanboy and whatnot. So now he just feels like, I don't know, just to be a fudster around it. I, I do like Plan C's, his Bitcoin charts and whatnot, but just him coming after Voyager and all this stuff has just been pretty annoying, uh, just, just fudding it out. And uh, after talking to a number of Voyager users to make sure that I'm not spreading any inf misinformation, my understanding is Voyager has had a 25,000 daily withdrawal limit for some time. However, this morning, this was changed to a 10,000 daily withdrawal limit. And I can't confirm this, but I swear it was always $10,000 withdrawal limit. And if you wanted to increase that limit, you had to go through uh, KYC, send them some documents, re-upload your driver's license to upload it to $25,000. And I'm pretty sure that's what I did uh, previously. And then and I I knew it was $25,000, but then, yeah, they did lower mine to $10,000. I did double check. But I swear off the top of my head, I remember always being at uh, $25,000. Or I take that back. I always remember it being at 10,000 withdrawal limit. Take that back. Whereas the withdrawal they're saying was always 25,000. So I can't get any clarification on that. If you guys know, let me let me know down in the comments or maybe it was deposits, instant deposits. I could be totally wrong. I have one backwards. But uh I mean, he might be right here, but still it's just kind of crazy with this, you know, all the stuff what's going on. They might be just covering their their ass and whatnot, their assets and all that type of stuff. That's why they did lower the withdrawal, because if they had everyone withdrawing hundreds of thousands of 500, they would just crash everything. Long story short. Next, we got a tweet from Obi-Wan, how people were complaining about ACH withdrawals or just withdrawals. Look at the traditional banks. He does a little chart up here where it's 
not that big of a deal when you think about it. Bank of America, only 3000 per day or 6000 per month for standard delivery. Chase, I do believe, is probably the largest, 10000 per transaction or 25000 per day. Uh, Wells Fargo is only 5000 Citibank, 2000 per day or 10000 per month. Uh, U.S. banks, $2,500 per day, depending on your account history. Capital One, $10,000 per day. Uh, you, can just, you guys can pause it and read all of them, but it's not much different than a traditional bank. So even if it was $25,000 withdrawal limits before, that's pretty much better than any traditional bank and comparable to Chase Bank here. So they, them lowering it to $10,000 is still better than a lot of the traditional banks out there. So just it's FUD, guys. It's just FUD. It's absolutely insane going on. Um. He also posted this down here. You guys can pause it. Um, wasn't the limit always 10000 Some requested higher. So Obi said it's fluctuated between ten and 25000 for 24 hours depending on market conditions and account activity in the past. At times, adjustable to KYC verified request to customer service. So there you guys have it there. I thought that was pretty interesting. You guys can pause and, and read this. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's just massive FUD going on. All right, next topic of discussion today was put out earlier tonight, a couple hours ago, that Alameda Ventures surrendered shares of their Voyager stock. So they reported on June 22nd, today is June 23rd, 22, but they did dispose of 4.5 million common and variable voting shares, which occurred by way of surrender to Voyager for cancellation and no consideration. The surrender and represented approximately 2.29% of the issued and outstanding shares of Voyager as of uh, June 22nd, 2022. Uh, the approximate value is 3.4 million Canadian or U.S. 2.6 million dollars, using the closing price of the shares at Toronto Stock Exchange as of yesterday, June 22nd. So, previously, Alameda did own about 22.6 million shares of Voyager, which was about 11.56 percent uh, issued in its selling shares of the Voyager as of June 22nd. Now they currently hold about 18.1 million shares, which represent less than 10% of the company, currently about 9.49% of the issued and outst outstanding shares of Voyager as of June 23rd, 2022. So I had to read this a couple times. I had to go out in social media, just try to ask some questions and see what other people were, were, were saying and whatnot. But as a result of this surrender, what this essentially means is that they are an affiliate and they have ceased to be reporting an insider of Voyager. So apparently if you own more than 10% of a company, you have to file and you got to uh, basically say all of your trades and everything, but we'll talk about that here shortly. So in our, uh, uh, what is our group? Our crypto chatter group that we have on, I can't even think of the dang thing. Signal group, man, I'm having a brain fart right now. I need some coffee or something, even though it's nine o'clock at night, but shout out to Neville Patterson. People were asking exactly why did they do this. My guess is so they would have control over Voyager. Different stock ownership equates to different powers within the company. And to me, it's a sign they're invested in Voyager without wanting to attempt a takeover. They have been a partner with Voyager for a long time, right? And to ensure they can add more funding if Voyager needs it down the line is what Cousin Eddie replied to. Neville said, exactly. That's exactly right. So that all makes sense. And a follow-up, Neville said, and this is good to note, that if Sam wanted to take over Voyager through Alameda, he could do it through a hostile takeover like Elon did, but Sam and Steve actually work together a lot more than we see, hence the reasoning behind inviting Steve to speak at the FTX conference last month, which they had in Jamaica, if you guys don't know. Steve did attend that. Here's a little background on Alameda. They offer full-service cryptocurrency trading and trades on every market and exchange, as well as engages in OTC trading. The firm provides liquidity in cryptocurrency and digital assets and markets. So... With this all being said, it's crazy uh, that I do believe that they do have a gr good partnership, Steve and Sam and whatnot, and I think that they're really trying to help them out. If they, Like he said, if they did want to buy them out, they could easily do that. But uh, with this current market and whatnot, I think uh, Sam does want to help out some of these companies. You know, they bailed out BlockFi as well for $250 million. And who knows what's, what's going on with Celsius. I have no idea, but I, I don't think they're going to make it. And GMI, definitely. Uh, but that's a whole other conversation. And also, real quick, going back to uh, if, if someone holds more than 10% of shares, shout out to Kevin Flynn on the VGX Heroes Discord. There is, I guess, transaction reporting by officers, directors, and 10% of shareholders. So Section 16 of the Exchange Act applies to SEC reporting companies, directors, officers, as well as shareholders who own more than 10% of a class of the company's equity securities registers under the Exchange Act. This rule 
Under Section 16 requires that insiders to report most of their transactions involving the company's equity securities to the SEC within two business days on Forms 3, 4, 5. Section 16 also establishes mechani- mechanisms for companies to recover short swing profits. Uh, an insider realizes from purchase and sale of the company's security that occur within a six-month period. In addition, Section 16 prohibits short selling by insiders of any class of the company's securities, whether or not that class is registered under the Exchange Act. Reduces the amount of outstanding shares. By default, the share price should rise uh, just by the reduction of outstanding shares, similar to how dilution or an increase of outstanding shares make existing shares less valuable, hence reducing its price. So that's kind of his uh, quick opinion on that, and that's kind of the basic reasoning behind you know, Alameda selling off those Voyager shares and now owning about 9.49% compared to the 11% beforehand, just in case. And I could, this could all be fe- speculation. If you guys know something or if you know in the comments, let me don't know, let me know down below just so that maybe long-term if Voyager does need it, more funding down the road, they'll be able to do that because, again, we're still waiting on 3AC to see if they are going to give back Voyager any of those gains by, I do believe, tomorrow something like $22 million, and then I think by the 28th, they're expected at all of it. Are we going to see any of that? Who knows? That's why we have the line of credit from Alameda, and if we do need more, hence, maybe that's why this has happened. Who knows? Last but not least, we got Mirthless Chud VGX Stunner tweeting out, here's a summary of all the posts about Invest Voyager this week. I've never paid attention to the company or what it does, but here's my 14 uh, tweet thread about what happens next. Idiots. Going back to what I said earlier, you got all these people coming out of the woodwork talking about Voyager since, oh, are they, is the same thing that happened to Voyager going to, or same thing that happened to Celsius going to happen to Voyager. You got, uh, you know, Cryptos R Us coming out, never really talks about Voyager, putting videos out. You got uh, Plancy coming out, just tweeting all about this FUD about Voyager, not never ever talking about it before, just always shilling Celsius and probably BlockFi and whatnot. But uh, that's just, just that's how the game works, man. Especially these influencers, big influencers, they jump on the trend, uh, and then they just start just for exposure. When people become irrelevant in things, they jump on trends to try to stay relevant. And this is kind of, I think, what we're seeing here. And it's it's pretty sad to be honest with you because I think Voyager in the long run is going to succeed and do well. This is just a hiccup on the road, just a bump. Uh, I think in the previous video I put out yesterday, I talked about it a little bit, but I do think that uh, they're going to come out stronger than ever after this. You know. 3A, people lent, all over people in the crypto space lended 3AC. They trusted them. They had over 18, 19 AUM. So definitely the risk management, I think, moving forward is going to be a big thing for Voyager. And I think uh, FTX and Sam see something in Voyager, and I guess BlockFi too, and, and they just want to help them out. So when we do get out of this bear trend, this bear market, hopefully we can see either Voyager come out on top and grow, or who knows, maybe they'll get acquired by FTX and his establishment or whatever the heck he's building but who knows all right guys that's all i have for you guys go follow me on tiktok if you want at crypto airborne i put out videos every now and then go give me a follow on instagram if you want at crypto underscore airborne last but not least go follow me on twitter that's where i do all my real-time updates that's where i'm most active at crypto underscore airborne so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video smash that thumbs up button on your way out Consider subscribing if you aren't subscribed and turn on those bell notifications so you get notified as soon as I upload a video. Happy Thirsty Thursdays. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your night. Anything pops up tomorrow, I'll be sure to let you guys know and keep you updated. Have a great one, everybody. Crypto Airborne, out.